Hey, what's up guys? Staying here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. I got sidekick Madison here because we are about to have to do some chicken wrangling and there's a reason for it. And we're going to try out something that I've never had to try out before. Um, and so I had to do some digging around and I found one that I think might work best for us. I bought it, took a little bit to get it in and Miss Madison's holding it here. Um, and it's going to be for Q-tip. So let's talk about what's going on with her. So y'all know Bruce here is our rooster, and he is the proud daddy this year to about 11 chicks that we hatched out, and all of them clearly came from him and not any of the roosters we used to have prior to. And one hen in particular seems to have become the love of his life. Miss Q-Tip here is starting to go bald on her backside because her and Bruce have become inseparable. Now, Bruce is doing what he's supposed to do, and the love is shared very equally throughout the flock. But Miss Q-Tip here even follows him around all the time, and she just tends to get a little more love. Now, Q-Tip is actually looking a little bit better than what she was at the time that I placed this order. Uh, but there was a time that she had a good portion of her back was like raw. It wasn't raw, but it was bare skin. And the thing is, though, is I don't want it to become raw. So I want to give her some form of protection. Now, we went through three roosters before we settled on Bruce, and Bruce has been really good. And even though he's wore her feathers out, you know, he's not nothing like we had with the other ones. The other roosters were drawing blood. The chickens were actually, you could tell they were scared of them. Uh, Bruce is still great. Um, I really just think Q-Tip actually likes it. Half the time I see Q-Tip following Bruce all over this place. Um, you know, so hey, she's on her own at this point, but I don't want her to get hurt. Um, and so I started looking at poultry saddles and I did a lot of research. <laughs> yes, we're talking about you, Bruce, calm down. But my concern with which one to go with had a lot to do with that Q-Tip is kind of an odd size. Q-tip is kind of an odd size. I, I believe Polish chickens are technically considered a bantam, but I see a lot of bantam smaller than her, and a lot of saddles I'd come across would be like, they'd say bantam size or regular size, and there wasn't much in between. And my worry was, was that one was gonna be too big or the other one was gonna be too small. And Q-tip, between you and Bruce, can you all quiet down? I, I think they're very upset that we're talking about them. She's squalling, he's crowing, it's just a mess. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, while I was doing a lot of looking though, I found this company that was called, I think, Down Under Outdoors. Um, and what I liked about it <laughs> is that supposedly you can you can adjust it into three different sizes in terms of like really small, medium, large. And my hopes was that this will have enough flexibility in it that it will work for q-tip i've never used one of these things ever and i'm not only do i think putting on might be a problem but q-tip if you all been with us prior to getting our prairie bluebells know that q-tip in my police world we call it the crackhead of chickens she's like all over the place she's spastic she's very hard to catch when you do catch her she screams a lot she gets very upset so i'm really not looking forward to trying to catch her capture her and i don't know bruce being like her sort of husband, boyfriend, I'm not sure. He might get very upset. The goose might get upset. I don't know. But we're going to try to capture her and hopefully put this on her. So, you know, give her some protection. The goose is... So, enough talking about it. I don't know how we're going to catch her. Let's just try to catch her and see what happens. Maybe I'll catch it on film. Maybe I won't. I don't know. It's she and I, and it's going to take every bit of both of us to try to get her. What are you doing? My shoe fell off. I'm trying to get something out of it, but I put more stuff in it. It actually didn't go as bad as I thought it would. So I'll see. I'll let y'all see what my concerns were, if I can keep her feathers in. So you can see Bruce has really wore her down. It's not the matter of mites or anything. He's just mating her so much, it's wearing her down to just skin. So we want to protect that. All right. So from the videos I've seen, it said to put them in your legs. Maybe they had to head away. I don't know. I feel like they was like this though. 
<laughs> what, what, what oh, wow, it? the curious chicken's out right now. So curious I think you got to have them like that, and then it's got these snaps. Undo the snaps, and then you pop these off, and that's where your adjusters are right there. So if I read right, I think you put this here, and then you get one wing out. Hey, stop. This is not very... Okay, you get a wing out. And then you come up and around. And you snap it like so. And you got to do it to the other one. I, Whoa! I, ow, oh, ow, Q-tip, Q-tip, calm, down. Q -tip, calm, calm down. down. Calm down. Scratch my leg. <laughs> Alright, let's come up, around. Looks like we're putting a dress on her. <laughs> and you can kind of, when you're moving the feathers around, you kind of feel where it slides up in there without messing up anything. Like I'm trying to figure out. For some reason... This one, I feel like, went up and around super easy. What's this one? Hey, Whoa, oh, stop, 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 stop. Hold on. Calm down. All right. This, oh my gosh, the curious chicken's, like, sitting in that chair. Well, it was. Looks like she has a cape on. Then... Fold this down, snap the three snaps, straighten her out. And she's good to go. Well, well you hurt. gotta get her wings out. Yeah, we gotta lay this down. Stop. Q-tip looks terrified. So that, is it on? Let's yeah. go set her down and see how she does. All right, let's set her down and see how she does. She might freak out did say that a chicken will walk kind of funny at first because they don't like the feeling of something on their back. <laughs> She's trying to get it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. You feeling a little weird, Q? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Q. We're trying to protect you. Yo, Q. I've never had to put anything on like this. So really, I'm just trying to... I'm not worried about her walking funny because I read that that's pretty normal. But... I just want to make sure she has full mobility and stuff, but she, she's, she's very, like, help me. She's very mad. She's trying to peck at it. She's doing her squawking. Yeah, she's like lifting her wing up and trying to get it out. Oh. Y'all look at this. She's over there telling on me. She's like, look what they did to me, Bruce. They did bad stuff to me. Help me. Oh, her neck's so puffy. <laughs> she's like, I'm hiding. <laughs> Q-tip, are you embarrassed? She, yeah, she's probably. So I don't know if y'all be able to see. There's old Q. She's uh, she's slowly becoming acclimated to it. I think she's doing okay. Um, she's been going all around the run. She's gone underneath in shame. But uh, I wanted to get it on pretty quick. But this is the one that we used right here. Um, and then on the back of it, it's basically just like a card, and it has some instructions on it. Cute. Now it also comes with what they called a shoulder cover. I, it's like a this feels like a thick sort of vinyl can I see um, I'm not really sure what the full purpose is of it you can see in this photo right here this chicken has it on um, I'm not fully sure what the the big part is with it um, but I ended up going with this one though overall because like I said it had the the multi sizes on it uh, the other reason why we got it was because it looked like it was more canvas type material and I was worried about something that was just like a, a cottony type material number one would get wet stay wet in the in the rain and maybe wouldn't hold up or flap up enough i don't want her to have something heavy on her but i also want something that's going to stay where it needs to be and feeling this i think that'll happen so i'll keep you up to date on how this goes this is just something that i saw that i thought i needed to do before she got 
uh, you know, raw or an infection or whatever it may happen. And I just went online, did some research, and this is what I settled on. So stay tuned for how this works in case you're ever in a need for a saddle type thing as well. So enough with these guys. Uh, we'll monitor them. We'll take you up to the brooder area where if you've been following us on Facebook or Instagram, you've probably been caught up to date. But those of you all here on the YouTube world probably aren't as up to date. But we got quite a bit of chicks going on in this brooder, so let's give you an update what? on that. Well, guys, there's so many in there, it's probably hard for you to see. And I, I really don't want to take the top off because they're to the point they fly out on me fast. But we have, I don't know anymore, there's probably One, about two. 11 or 12 in here. Um, and most of the dark ones you see in there are Taken over babies Bruce. from Bruce that we hatched out. There are a couple barred rocks in there that we got from a local feed store as well. Um, and then the lighter color ones are mostly Americanas that we got from the feed store as well. But these guys are actually going to be going outside probably within the next week. And then over here in this tote, we got a few more littles, a couple Americanas, a couple Isa Browns, a couple Sapphire Gems. So all in all, you know, we hatched the ones we did, plus we've been buying some at the feed store. And some of the ones I bought at the feed store, I didn't really plan to buy, but finding chicks has been so hard. Some friends of mine have been looking for some, so the feed store is close by. So if they had some, I call them, I get them, and just kind of hold on to them for them till they can come get them. But, so yeah, we got double brooders going here in the shed. S same setup as we usually do. We got them running, tied up two different spots here, tied in that way. And it's at least somewhat climate controlled in here, at least keeping drafts off of them. But they're doing well. Everybody's holding up good. Here's the big kicker on the, the brood and the chicks in here that I'm talking about is I did a video not too long ago about keeping it simple and the basics of brooding chicks. And here's the reality is this year, just in this little bit of time, I have brooded 28 birds. And of 28 birds, all 28 have been fine. I've not done anything special, nothing crazy. You know, just kept it very basic here in the shed. 28 birds, all 28 living. Usually a lot of people don't have that. So you don't have to overcomplicate it and you can still have some success. If you haven't seen that, I suggest you check that out if you're new to chicks and hopefully it'll de-stress it a little bit for you and you'll realize this ain't as bad as I thought it might be. Come here, Clay. Look at this, guys, too. Another update for you. Somebody, if you've been following us on Facebook and Instagram, you know that this little miss had a pretty bad injury and she's doing really good now there is still i don't know if you can see it but right here let's see if y'all can see this at all from the angle it's kind of hard to see but you may see an indention right here and she's okay as long as i don't push on that indention it's pretty tender you see she gets up but we appreciate everybody who kept her in your thoughts and prayers when she was hurt it was a pretty scary moment uh, but she's doing okay so um, and, and talking about that, let me go show you the tree still there and show you what now is our issue that I got to deal with related to when she got hurt as well. So here's the tree that fell on Chloe that I talked about on Facebook and Instagram. And it was down here towards this tail end that hit her. And it's not huge. I mean, you can see it's, you know, it's bigger than the size of my hand grabbing it, but it's got some weight because of how long it is. And now since then, Look at my other issue. I got another piece of it that has snapped off and is hanging over. Now, we don't have any of it touching the electrical line that we have run to keep the bears and stuff from getting in here, but obviously I need to get my saw and we gotta get this cut up and get this removed very soon. <laughs> this little thing seems to be nervous now about coming over there versus she used to follow me constantly all the time, but I'm just thankful that she's okay because this dog is literally like my best friend. She goes with me everywhere, stays with me, sleeps in my armpit, and I'd have felt terrible if something had happened to her. For those of you that didn't see it on Facebook and Instagram, basically what happened was I had a similar situation to what you saw there a minute ago where a part of a tree had snapped out, was hanging over the pig area, and in the process of cutting it, Chloe had been all the way on the far side near where Mater is, prior to me dropping it down to the ground. And last minute, as it was going to the ground, I noticed Chloe was now right there. And I yelled for her to move. She didn't move fast enough. And she almost was out of the way, but just that end area caught her right across her back. She was yelping really bad. Uh, she couldn't get up. I carried her into the house. And after a period of time, 
she started to kind of move some, but if you just touched her back at all, she yelped really loud. She had a really soft spot in her back. And all I could think about was when we lost Henry in a similar fashion, but his branch was a whole lot bigger, a little bit different situation. And thankfully we took her to the vet. Uh, they did some tests and some x-rays and stuff. And basically they said everything structurally looked okay for us to monitor her over the next several days, make sure there's no internal bleeding. And if we get past that, it may just be, you know, four to six weeks for her to heal just from pain and soreness from a traumatic injury like that. And I think that's where we're at. She's, she's definitely not the way she used to be, especially as the day progresses at nighttime as she's going to bed. I mean, she really limps when it's time to get to bed. And you can tell sometimes when she's laying, it's not comfortable. But right now, we're, we're just giving her some pain medicine as needed. And we're going to hope sooner than later, this thing, she'll be back to her normal self. So once again, guys, I just want to say thank you and give you an update on how she's been progressing as well. Um, it was really, really um, nice to hear the words of encouragement and the thoughts and prayers for her as she was trying to heal up. Well, guys, y'all might be able to see Q-tip back there, but I think that's going to wrap everything up for today. I've never had to put a saddle on a, on a chicken, so I just wanted to share with you all, number one, the saddle that we're using and how well it may or may not have gone on so far for, for putting on her. That actually went pretty well. We'll see how it holds up as time progresses. Now, we will not leave that on her like permanently. Really, I'm just going to leave that on her to give those feathers some time to grow back. And once the feather growth has come back pretty good, then we'll go ahead and take it back off and let her go back like normal. If it starts to get worn down a lot, we'll put it back on after that. But our plan is not to leave it on there for, for long term. It's really just for the short term fix to help her heal up. Uh, so... Wanted to share that with you. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, if it turns out good, it might be an option for you. So guys, I hope you find this interesting. Hope this was helpful. Hope you the updates uh, on Chloe Dog and some of the chicks uh, were interesting as well, or at least want to provide you the updates on those because a lot of you have been asking about Chloe in particular. So guys, we'll be back here very soon. It's almost about to be seed starting time, which we're excited about and to get cranked up in the garden. we got some new additions for the garden to help with our setup and our structures of it. So we look forward to sharing that with you all as well. But until we get then, until we get together, guys, to talk about those things, we hope everybody's been doing good and we'll see you here real soon on our next episode. Thanks, guys. Well, guys, there she is. She's been selling in. She's eating. She's hanging out with the crew. She looks like she's living life like normal now. I think she's going to be good.